Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your general energy reading. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Please keep in mind, Scorpio, that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Check the information in the description box below where I list a the list of my uh, the readings that I offer as well as my email address. Shoot me an email letting me know you're interested and I will be more than happy to get you all set up there. If you'd like some extra content with me throughout the month, also if you would like to support the channel, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. There are some tiers over on Patreon in which you get discounts or even a free personal reading with your Patreon membership. So check that out, patreon.com slash divine conversations a big shout out to all my current patrons thank you guys so much for being a part of the unicorn herd without you i would not be able to be here you can also check us out on instagram and twitter the links to those can be found in the description box below as well let's get into this scorpio scorpio sun moon rising venus and north node this is also a timeless reading this is not meant to resonate for you at any specific moment other than when it does in your life at that moment. Did that make sense? I don't know. Let's give this three more shuffles for you, Scorpio, yeah? And we'll see what your message is for this moment in your life. This is two. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and North Node. What messages do you have for Scorpio, please, Spirit? And this is three. All right, Scorps. Let's see what we've got for you. The Hierophant. Ooh, Scorpio, I feel like you are trying to set the record straight for somebody. You're trying to lay down the rules, um, lay down the law in your life. For some of you, I feel like you're done with the, tom with the tomfoolery. You're done with the fuckery. This is a very interesting energy, Scorpio, because I feel like this is a person who has been very willy-nilly, very, very loosey-goosey. All about the party, all about the fun, all about the good time. Whatever happens, happens. Don't take anything too seriously. But now all of a sudden, something is causing you to say, nah, fuck that. I'm done with this shit. What's this? The Queen of Wands, okay? Honestly, Scorpio, it feels like somebody's growing up here. Two more cards. You have the Magician with the Six of Wands. All right, some of you may look, some, some, somebody, some of you may have individuals looking at you like right now, like you're some... Like you're some righteous. What makes you so righteous? Well, you're stepping into a level of power. You have the emperor as the overall energy. And what I feel like is happening. Oh, sorry, Scorpio. There's some some yard work going on in the background. Um, anyway, what I feel like is happening here, Scorpio, is you're finally getting to a point where you're ready to be... In a, you're ready you're ready to start moving forward with what it is you're in alignment with in your life or you're ready to start getting into alignment in your life for I mean at its base at its base Scorpio what this feels like is someone is ready to start really doing something with their life start making something of their life quote unquote um, start manifesting start and, and it's not I, I want to shy I I want to I want to be very cautious here because I am not of the mindset of you have to do 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 you have to accomplish 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 you know you have to make a ton of money or you have to be really famous or you have to be some super crazy as successful business person whatnot whatever like that is not that is not it okay but what I feel like is happening here is somebody's life purpose is coming online Okay, you're starting to recognize or you're starting to want to have some sort of purpose or at least work towards some sort of goal in your life instead of just being all complete loosey goosey, you know, party every day. Let's have a rager here and there, blah, blah. Let's go on a bender, like whatever. Okay, and not that I'm passing judgment on anybody for any of that, you know, that that phase in your life, it served a purpose. But you're coming out of that. And even if this is just figurative, okay, take it as it resonates. There is a level of coming out of some sort of energy that was less than structural. And now moving forward with some sort of desire to actually manifest something in your life. Some of you may be saying, actively saying to yourself, I want to make something of my life. 
Beautiful. However that resonates for you, whatever that means for you, that's great. Okay? As long as it, it is in alignment with your heart, with your sense of purpose, with your soul, and it's not coming from a place of someone telling you what to do, how to be, how to act, what to, what to manifest, what to go for, then that's great. But I don't, even, I don't really even think it is that because you have this emperor energy here. And the emperor is the executive, the CEO of one's life. The emperor makes the decisions for the self. I feel like you're really taking your power back now. You're ready to manifest, okay? You're ready, you're ready, you're, okay. You're ready to manifest something meaningful in your life now. Beautiful. But you see, Scorpio, that is going to take you needing to put a level of, or you needing to adhere to a certain level of rules and regulations. That's where we get the Hierophant from. And that's where we have some people in your life that were previously a part of your life now looking at you like you're some sort of like who the who the F does this person think they are now all of a sudden creating all these rules. Don't even fuck with them. Let them talk their shit. Let them do what they're going to do. I mean, at one point, Scorpio, you vibed with them. You aligned with them, too. So you really can't even be mad for them, mad at them for that. Right? That's par for the course. I mean, it is what it is. The fact of the matter is, at this point, Scorpio, you have this new alignment coming online. And really, all you need to pay attention to is how to follow through with that. You don't got to worry about what anybody else has to say about it. Let them haters hate. Let, I mean, like, whatever, yo. That is none of... The, the emperor is not even concerned with that shit. Okay? Ne nor do you need to be. All right? And I'm not even trying to pass shade on those people anyway. Like, what it is what it is. You know, let them be where they are. When they're ready, just like you, when they're ready, they will come out of it and they will fall in alignment with what they need to fall in alignment with too, okay? It ain't even that serious. <laughs> Let's talk about the Queen of Wands here. The Queen of Wands represents your new alignment, what it is you want to be manifesting in your life, Yeah. Your point of attraction when it comes to working with the law of attraction, if you will. Yes. What is this Queen of Wands for Scorpio? The Knight of Swords. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. Aggressively following through with something. Uh, something has catalyzed this energy within you, Scorpio, in which... You are aggressively moving forward towards what it is your true alignment is, what it is you truly want out of life. Some of you may have recognized that you may have been wasting time and you feel like time uh, time is you're losing time or something like that. Time is an illusion, guys, and everything happens in divine like everything happens when it's supposed to, okay? Don't worry about time so much. So this Queen of Wands energy really just kind of feels like someone recognizing what they may have been missing out on. Recognizing how certain people around them, their, their community, this hive mind mentality, whatever group of people that I was picking up on that you, you may be leaving behind or setting greater restrictions upon. I feel like you're starting to recognize how they were distracting you or how they were taking you away from your true fulfillment, from your true happiness here. And now you're aggressively cutting anything out that keeps you from that happiness, that keeps you from that point of manifestation to bring you a greater sense of happiness, bring you a greater sense of reciprocity. The Six of Pentacles is your overall energy here. There's definitely a level of aggression coming through with this. That doesn't, I mean, that doesn't really surprise me, Scorpio. It doesn't. I mean, you're a pretty, you're a pretty aggressive energy when you, when, when you want to be, when you need to be, okay? I mean, traditionally, you're ruled by Mars. And now more, more, like, and now in this day and age, as other planets have been discovered, now you're ruled by Pluto. And Pluto is one chaotic, strong-ass energy, Okay. So this really is not out of the ordinary for you. That Knight of Swords is very much an energy of like certain individuals getting the stinger of, you know, of the, the scorpion stinger. You know what I mean? But like, it is what it is. <laughs> 
okay? But aggressively getting into alignment with what it is you truly want. And I also feel like this Three of Cups energy here is you desiring to now align with people that are more on your level or that are more in um, your energetic space rather than whomever it was that you were in alignment with before. The Three of Cups can absolutely, absolutely be seen as soul family, okay? There is a level of aggressively pursuing that which is more familiar to your soul. There is also a level here of um, letting go of more of the three-dimensional aspects of life and really focusing on aligning more with the spiritual aspects of life, which would be what is more in alignment with soul familiarity or soul family and stuff like that. Okay. I want to talk about these restrictions you're putting into place in your life. What is this Hierophant energy for Scorpio? What is this Hierophant energy for Scorpio? Seven of Pentacles is the first card. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Clarify the Hierophant too. There it is. Bam, bam. Okay, Four of Pentacles and the Three of Swords. Overall energy is Temperance. Well, that's quite beautiful, Scorpio. All right, so check it out. First card for the Hierophant, representing the Hierophant here, is the Seven of Pentacles. So the Seven of Pentacles is, the, is that moment that you start to realize that you're not getting what it is you intended to receive. Or maybe it's not that you're not getting what it is you intended to receive. Because in a lot of cases, you were getting exactly what you were putting your investment in. The Seven of Pentacles can very much be a, an energy of you made your bed, now you need to lie in it, right? Well... In most cases, what this is feeling like here, Scorpio, is you realizing that the whatever the fruits of whatever harvest you have going on right now, this is not it. This is absolutely not it. This is not what you want. Wow. Excuse me, guys. Some of you may have dealt with a near-death experience. Because I'm looking at this Four of Pentacles energy now, and what I'm hearing is I want to live. I'm, feel, I'm looking at this Four of Pentacles energy, and yes, it is a bit of a hoarding type of energy. That is traditionally what the Four of Pentacles represents. But what I'm getting for you specifically, Scorpio, is you wanting to live. You wanting to hold on to your, <clears throat> to your corporeal existence. You wanting to hold on to the life that you have. At the life that you have now, the body that you have now, the existence that you're a part of now, you don't want to lose this. So some of you may have been dealing with some really dangerous things. Like some of, somebody here may have even overdosed. You may have dealt with a near death experience or you may have you may have woken up in some sort of situation or circumstance in which you are realizing you could very well lose your life somehow. Or you could, you could very well lose everything that you have worked so hard to gain. Whether that is a business, whether that is a home or certain possessions, whether that be a certain financial reality, whether, what, whatever, whatever, whatever that is. This was a massive wake-up call. This... Uh, 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 the Hierophant here <clears throat> is representing the structure, is representing the regulation, is uh, the rules that need to be put in place for specific reasons. This is also giving me very strong emperor energy, which was at the bottom of the deck for you originally in the beginning of the reading. And the emperor is coming through here because the emperor puts restrictions and boundaries in place in order to preserve the empire. I was just saying this to Pisces. In order to preserve the empire, not to control for shits and giggles. No, in order to make sure that the empire and all within flourish, flourishes. That's why these rules need to be in place. And so there was some sort of wake-up call for you, Scorpio, to, to say to yourself, oh, that's why I need, to, I need to follow X, Y, and Z rules or regulations or whatnot, whatever. But that never made sense for you. That never had value to you until you had a reason to want to preserve whatever it is you're wanting to preserve. And really, for the most part, the strongest thing that I'm feeling there, Scorpio, is that is your life that you are wanting to preserve. 
It's like you have a new reason to live. Okay. Last thing I want to look at for you, Scorpio, is the magician. And I don't necessarily want to put on blast what it is you're trying to manifest. I want to get some advice in terms of that manifestation for you, okay? Okay. Advice for this magician energy for Scorpio, please, Spirit. Okay, first card you have is the Eight of Swords. That did fall out on that Three of Swords there. Do not allow the pain of whatever it is you've experienced to be a prison for you. There is still a level here, Scorpio, of you needing to be that free, spirited type energy that you were before. This, this situation, Scorpio, was not meant for you to go from being a free-spirited hippie tree hugger to some stick in the mud, you know, why did I just hear financial advisor? I don't know. I guess it's the contrast between someone that works in business and finance and someone that's a free spirit. Okay. You're not meant to be a stick in the mud. Okay. This was, okay. So don't allow in terms of this manifestation, in terms of what it is, how it is you're trying to change your life. Or what it is you're trying to manifest at this point. Do not allow the pain that has caused you to realize that you need to preserve something to become a prison. Okay. Any more advice for that with this magician energy for Scorpio, please? Okay. You have one card that's fallen on the floor here. Um, it's the four of wands. I'm being told to take it upright and then you have the magician i'm sorry not the magician the hanged man overall energy is the six of swords okay see now interestingly enough as i was talking about that prison that mental prison the confining energy that the three of swords or this pain or whatever may may cause for you that four of wands in response was reversed do not allow this to make you feel like you are not ready to make you feel like you are less than prepared. I understand there is something that you are definitely wanting to preserve, four of pentacles, but understand that you already have the spiritual, the creative, the, 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 the foundation to create. Do not allow whatever you are trying to preserve or however you've been kicked into gear to preserve your life and manifest something new. Again, Scorpio, do not allow that to become a prison. Just allow it to be the catalyst and recognize that you have everything within you. It was literally just meant to be a wake-up call, Scorpio. It was not meant to be a situation in which now you have to be hyper-vigilant. You have to be completely always on the lookout. Try, like, no, 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 no. It served its purpose. It got you to wake up. It got you to recognize or realize what you really want to be doing here. Or how you really want to be aligned here. You have victory coming to you, Scorpio. Allow yourself to just move forward at this time with this new level or this new sense of manifestation under your belt, okay? Do not allow the past circumstances that have woken you up to become a prison. Please, Scorpio. That's not what it was meant for. And this Hierophant energy is will do that. Okay, even though the Hierophant for you specifically is representing rules and regulations that are quite necessary, also keep in mind that the Hierophant represents status quo, religion, uh, uh, institutions, and those that status quo, that religion, that institution isn't always good. It can be very restrictive. You're not meant to go from a free spirit to becoming an institution yourself. You know what I mean? Like... You're still meant to be a free spirit. There is just a little bit of sense we needed to lock, knock into you, <laughs> spirit just said. That's all. To get you back on track. To get you motivated to do what's really in alignment with you. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's get you some closing oracle guidance. And I am being guided. I am being uh, instructed to get that from the Gods and Titans deck. Yes? All right. If I can get into the box. <laughs> Here we go. 
closing oracle guidance for my Scorpios, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Not Jupiter, North Node. Here we go. Maybe it is Jupiter too. I did want to say that in the beginning of the reading. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, North Node, maybe even Jupiter. <laughs> closing oracle guidance, please. Spirit for Scorpio. Last shuffle here. Closing Oracle Guidance for Scorpio, please, Spirit. Two of them. Aha, Nuada, Perfection, and Odin, Guidance. Yeah, I'm gonna read both of those. Give me a second. Uh, there we go. Whew. All right, Scorpio, buckle up. These are going to be a little lengthy. <laughs> okay, but here we go. Love and appreciate your uniqueness and your imperfections. Question the cost of chasing perfection. Delight in who you are. The story of Nuada is a very ancient one that has woven itself into different themes and variations over different times and places. One thing that stays constant is his exploration of suitability and perfection. Nuada is the king of Eren, one of the heroic Tuatha de Danann, which is one of the mystical ancient races of Ireland. According to myth, these early Celtic times were far from peaceful, with bloody battles being waged continuously. During one of the major battles, the Danans, led by Nuada and his Sword of Invincibility, defeated the Firbolgs. The fighting was so bloody and fierce, though, that Nuada lost his right hand. This was a disaster for Nuada, as there was an ancient law that precluded anyone who was not whole from being, oh, oh, uh, um, sorry, uh, ancient law that uh, precluded anyone who was not whole from being king. His mutilation lost him his rule, even though he was a victorious, just, and benevolent leader. The Danans then chose Bree as their leader. I'm sorry, Briss, or maybe it's Bree, B-R-E-S. Uh, Bree, although a skilled fighter, had little of Nuada's wisdom and fairness. The kingdom soon fell, felt the effects of this discordant king. Nuada's brother, the physician Dion uh, Sect, fashioned a magical silver hand to replace the one Nuada lost. Not only functional, the silver hand was beautiful too. Nuada came Nuada Ergeldam, Nuada of the Silver Hand again worthy among his people, and Bree stepped down from the th throne. Today, more than ever, we chase perfection, but what, what is it really? We often see external perfection as necessary to success. The quest for perfect beauty and a perfect body has thrown us towards a predict, uh, uh, predilection for worry about our external looks enhancing ourselves with too much makeup and even surgery, and obsessing over dieting and unhealthy eating habits. When did the fact that we have a healthy, strong, functional bodies become not enough? We are born with everything we need to be what we are meant to be. We are born imperfectly perfect. Our uniqueness has a reason. Nuada reminds us that to be perfect, we need not pursue some unattainable and false ideal. Perfection is a subjective judgment and not an objective reality. In Nuada's case, he was the best leader. His missing hand did not take away from his great leadership qualities. And finally, you have Odin, which is literally the next god in the book. That's awesome. Odin. Guidance. Seek guidance to solve an issue. Choose carefully whom you take counsel from. Respect experience. It takes time to develop wisdom and knowledge. Be patient. 
Odin is perhaps the most honored of all ancient Norse gods and is referred to as the All-Father because his position as a protector and leader of both gods and humans. He is considered the wisest of all gods. The thunder god, Thor, is perhaps the most well-known of Odin's children. Odin has an interesting duality as he is both god of war and death and a god of poetry, storytelling, and intelligence. Warriors honored him before battle because they hoped to enter his halls in Asgard if they died. Fathers and teachers, too, honored him in the hopes that they would be wise and protective for their children in their care. Those who wished to glimpse their futures or gather, yeah, gather wisdom through an oracle could use his runes, the oracular tool Odin created which were a series of symbols often curved on bone, wood, or stone. You can still buy sets of runes today. The mighty Odin appears in many wonderful stories, most, of with a, most with a theme of gaining wisdom and accepting wise guidance. Odin is often depicted as with only one eye, as he exchanged the other for a sip at the Well of Wisdom where he has, when he was traveling to the World Tree a place of connective power. This enabled him to see far, to know much, and to listen to all the stories of the world. Odin teaches us that education and listening to various wise voices is invaluable to, one, to, is invaluable to, own, to one's own growth and development. The more we know about a situation, the better we can assess it. Research is rarely wasted. He also suggests that you can find wise teachers among those with direct experience regarding your situation or those who have many years of experience at your task. If you need guidance in any situation, Odin is a solid choice to turn to and he can guide you toward the answers that you need. Beautiful. So there you have it, Scorpio. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Check the information in the description box below. Shoot me an email letting me know you're interested and I will be more than happy to get you all hooked up. If you would like to support the channel and get extra content with me throughout the month, even especially potentially discounts on your readings, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. There are certain tiers that offer you either a 10 or 20% discount on your personal readings, or there is also a uh, tier that gets you one personal reading with me every month of your subscription. And as always, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yeah? Excellent. Bye.